Hey there, in today's video, I'm gonna do a brief update of five carbon plate running shoes. The Nike Alpha Fly 3, New Balance, Fuel Cell, Super Comp Elite version 4, Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2, Asics Metaspeed Sky Paris, and lastly, my Nike Vaporfly 3s. Phew. The shoes are my four latest carbon fiber plate running shoes and my Vaporfly 3s, which I've run my fastest marathon in. And I picked them in a particular order. The Alpha Fly 3s first, simply because they take much longer to put on than the other shoes. So I'm wearing them now and they're the first ones I'm gonna run in. And then I'll wrestle those off and then I'll put on the New Balances. And I wanted to see those in comparison. The Mizunos are super easy to put on. They're a shoe I really like running in. They're kind of incomparable, so I'm not really trying to compare them to anything. They fit nicely in the middle. Then I'll do the Metaspeed Sky Paris, and lastly, the Vaporfly. And again, those two will be paired close together. I have to run at a steady pace. It's it's doable, it's not, it's not too fast, but it's faster than my marathon pace, which will give me a little bit of an idea of, of how the shoes perform. I will try and share the stride data in the description of this video so you can do whatever you want with it and analyze it to your heart's content. I think you can do that. I'm certainly allowed to share the link. I don't know how you, how you access the data, but presumably it opens up on your browser. But I'm not expecting massive differences between them because I'm trying to run at the same pace or the same power in all of them and over a short distance, it's not always that easy to make comparable data, but I will then give my impressions after I've run in all five of them. I've made detailed reviews of each of the shoes. I'll put the links in the description. As part of my Boston training, I've been using my Stride foot pods and I saw pop up a Supra threshold interval, five blocks of five minutes, which would be about a kilometer with two minutes and 45 seconds in between. And I thought of my local park, the Sean Moore Park, where there's a lap, it's about a lap is about a kilometer. And I thought, yeah, why don't I take five shoes out, do five minutes in each one, change between, and then see what I can find out. I noted down my thoughts on the shoes before I went to the park, my thoughts after I'd run back to back in the five shoes, and then what my thoughts are after I got on the stride platform and analyzed some of the data. As always, this video might be long, so the chapter mark is down below, so you can skip on through to the bits you might be interested in. Let's get going. The shoes were all pretty much new. They're all arrived since Christmas, apart from the Vaporfly 3. The Alpha Fly 3 has 107 kilometers, 66 miles. The New Balance has 34 kilometers, 21 miles. The Mizuno has 12 kilometers, seven and a half miles. And the Sky Paris, 17 kilometers, 10.75 miles. The mileage doesn't reflect my enjoyment of the shoe or any particular thing, more that they've been here for a longer period of time than the others. The Vaporfly 3 is the longest here, 151 kilometers, 94 miles. And it's got two marathons in it, Rotterdam and New York Marathon in 2023. I put a lot of data regarding shoes into the descriptions, but just to give you an idea of the cost, the Mizuno and just in Euro, the Mizunos are 240, the Sky Paris are in 250, the Vaporfly 3s are 260, but they're available on discount, the New Balance are 280, and the Alpha Fly 3s are 310, the most expensive in this test. I buy all my shoes in the same size, UK 12. That usually translates to US men's 13 in these shoes, but in New Balance it's US 12.5 in men's, and it can vary in the EU sizes. But I tried to buy them in the same size for comparative purposes. In the weight, the Sky Paris is 228 grams, 8.04 ounces. The Vaporfly 3s, I'm doing these in order. The Vaporfly 3s are 242 grams, 8.54 ounces. The Alpha Fly 3 is 266 grams, 9.38 ounces. The Mizuno are 279 grams, 9.84 ounces. And the New Balance are the heaviest at 284 grams, 10.12 ounces. I've run this particular course loads of times. I use it for lots of training. You'll have seen it before, probably if you watch these videos. It's a one kilometer loop or just over that, depending on which way you, you route. But I did that to be just over a kilometer. There's a long straight, then you go out to Sandy Mount Strand. There's some 90 degree bends. The course was dry. There's very little elevation, but it was very windy. So windy that I was taking pictures and I'd intended to do a lot of pieces to camera in the park, but the monopod and all the, the microphones and the cameras just kept falling over. So yeah, back here for the analysis. To give some performance thoughts before, first of all, the pace I have to run at is 304 to 322 watts as measured on my stride 
foot pods. I'm going to be running at 98 to 104 percent of my stride critical power. To give you an idea, to run the Boston Marathon, I'm going to be using my stride and I'm going to go at 272 watts. I say that now, <laughs> hoping to stick to that all the way through. But I ran a race at 10k last week at 302 watts and that turned out to be 4 minutes 47 per kilometer. So I'm going to be running faster than my marathon pace and should be a nice little test that I'm really looked forward to before I went out. So really excited about going to the park and trying this test out. I've had the AlphaFly 3 a couple of months. It's going really well for me. I had a run over Hoth Head, which is quite steep on the way up and then downhill into Dublin on a long day. And I, you know, I've, even after a, a, a quite a lot of elevation and down to flat, I cruise along really nice in this shoe. I prefer it to the first one and the second one works much better for me and is my chosen shoe for Boston as of the start of making this uh, particular test. I thought, well, I'll run Boston knees. I was interested in collecting all the data. As I said, if I wanted to do a personal best, I picked the Vaporfly, but this is a, a great shoe that I'm looking forward to testing on longer distances. I was considering the New Balance for Boston. I mean, it's the hometown shoe to a certain extent, but it was a little bit heavier than the um, Alpha Fly, and that was a concern for me, but it was a shoe I found really comfortable and one that I do want to run a marathon in at some stage. The Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro shoe I really like running in. It requires a certain technique to run in it, one that you kind of, for me at least, settle into a pace and just keep going at that pace. And for me, I want a, a flat race to, to test this shoe out in. And actually what I wanted to do is run the Cabbage Patch 10, a race I ran many years ago, I think it was in 1992 or thereabouts, I ran the Cabbage Patch 10 in 62 minutes, I think. It was a great race. And when I, I, I saw it pop up somehow or other, I thought, yeah, this would be a shoe I'd love to run that race in. So I might get in, it's in October, I think it entry opens April, but yeah, I won't be running a marathon in this until I'm sure of my uh, 10 mile, 10K pace in it. The Sky Paris arrived. I had considered getting the Edge Paris, but went for the Sky Paris. I wasn't sure if it was faster than the Sky Plus and felt uh, firm underfoot. So this was one I was really looking forward to testing and seeing what the data said. The Vaporfly 3 ran my personal best at Boston qualified, three hours, 43, 29 seconds at the age of 60, turned 60 and squeaked in. But I took 10 minutes off my personal best. So no other questions asked. This would be a shoe I'd be picking if I wanted to run a personal best. To give you my thoughts on the run, first of all, I ran in the Alpha Fly 3s because I know they're, they're difficult to wrestle on and I discovered that they're difficult to wrestle off. So these were the first ones that I was running in for that reason. I didn't want to be delayed popping these things on. It doesn't matter in a marathon shoe, but in a quick test like this, it was important. When I was running along, the first thing I noticed is lots going on on the shoe. I kept feeling the shoe was wavering, but you can hear the noise, they make a, a considerable noise, and you just always have the feeling that there's a lot going on in this shoe. Before I did the test, the shoe closest to the Alpha Fly 3 for me is the New Balance, the Fuel Cell Super Comp Elite version 4. <laughs> Takes me longer to say the thing on the run the lap. Anyway, these were, I stepped into these, they're immediately comfortable, really easy to put on and and you start running and you they just feel easy straight away less of a performance done in the alpha fly 3. i noticed a good grip there's some grippiness down here and i also noticed the ventilation in the shoe i could feel air coming through and ventilated it was a windy day but they were nicely ventilated the mizuno is a super easy shoe to put on it opens out really wide very very easy to put on <laughs> you immediately feel it it's it really there's an amazing feeling in the middle of this shoe with all of its foam as i said it takes me time to settle into it so on a one lap one kilometer not ideal i was surprised how good the grip was and one of the tests involved literally turning at 90 degrees i wanted to check that and i didn't feel any instability and i could feel down here i could feel the the grip in it and i really did feel that i needed longer distance to settle into it it also does make a clip clop sound like a like a horse which i've, I've did on my preview because of the i think the the way the chamber works down here but it was a really nice shoe to run in. I am looking forward to running a, uh, a race in this particular shoe. I then headed out in the Sky Paris and just as I was about to head out, I could feel my hamstring sort of tweaking slightly. I thought, oh, I better slow down in this, but I thought, I'll, I'll keep going. And But I was wondering would that affect the pace? And I noticed, the first thing I noticed about the shoe is it does feel firm. Certainly when you get out of Mizuno, this feels really firm. But I was kind of looking at my watch and I was kind of shocked at how fast I was going. I wasn't, I wasn't trying in this particular thing, I wasn't trying to go fast. I was trying to go at the set wattage, but once I got there to 
settle into it and in the uh, performance things later I waited uh, you'll see where I, I, I take the date on the lap where I wait till I get to a certain I've run it at 20 30 meters and then then I take the data but it was really uh, yeah I was shocked at the pace and I was also I wasn't shocked at the firmness it's a firm shoe but uh, and I did notice it more firm inside here but yeah I was uh, somewhat shocked in the pace which we'll uh, come to in the results Vaporfly 3 is also easy to get on. It's got a kind of stupid tongue. You have to flap it out of the way, but no biggie. The first thing I noticed how much softer it felt than the Metaspeed Sky Paris. It felt much softer and I headed out and easy to settle into a nice pace. The thing I noticed most initially was the ventilation. There's a lot of holes at the forefoot. And yeah, if you like a shoe for ventilation, this is the pick of the bunch. My thoughts before I went for the run and my thoughts afterwards were, Similar except for one shoe, which is this one. This shoe, I was trying to go at a, at a sort of set pace without thinking too, too much about it. And um, you can't read too much into these, but I went further in these. I could tell each time when I got closer to the car, but these I went further in in the same given time, which was interesting. In the run, I was taking a lot of data from my stride foot pods, but I also took some from my Garmin and I had a connected Apple Watch. And afterwards, I, I put a post on Strava where I put a link to my stride details and thanks to Justin and Talene for figuring out some of them. And um, I was pr I'm was i principally interested in, in, in four metrics. There are lots of metrics and, and you can go through them to your heart's content because the links will be in the description. But I'm interested in the cadence, my stride, my length, and my vertical oscillation. They're the four that I'm most interested in. And the one I'm really passionate about is any of these shoes that can lengthen my stride is one I really am interested in. But you may be interested in other data and you can head on to stride and analyze to your heart's content. A couple of caveats before we start. The data set is small. The lab rat is on his own and he's old. There's only one kilometer of data in each shoe. The data is affected by the pace. I could have gone faster in a particular shoe for any particular reason, and I would have skewed some of the data. What I did was I ran for about 20 meters to settle into a, what I felt was a comfortable pace at this particular power output, and then I just kept going without paying too much attention to the watch or to the data. I did like the fact that there was a straight, it was windy, there was it was dry, that was important. And I did like the fact that there was some 90 degree bends and in the data I've captured the exact same kilometer in each one. You can trim stuff on stride, you can kind of set uh, parameters. It's, it's really good for analyzing data, which is I guess what I like to do. Some results, the Alpha Fly 3, power 322 watts, pace 4 minutes 42 seconds per kilometer, cadence 187 steps per minute, ground contact time 214 milliseconds, Vertical oscillation, 6.19 centimeters. Stride, one meter, 14 centimeters. New balance, power 327 watts. Pace, four minutes, 46 seconds per kilometer. Cadence, 185 steps per minute. Ground contact time, 230 milliseconds. Vertical oscillation, 6.5 centimeters. Stride, one meter, 14 centimeters. The Mizuno, power 320 watts. Pace, four minutes, 48 per kilometer, cadence 185 steps per minute, ground contact time 227 milliseconds, vertical oscillation 6.24 centimeters, and stride 1 meter 13 centimeters. The A6 Metaspeed Sky Paris, power 337 watts, pace 4 minutes 32 per kilometer, cadence 189 steps per minute, ground contact time 231 milliseconds, vertical oscillation 6.04 centimeters, stride 1 meter 17 centimeters. Vaporfly 3, power 320 watts, pace 4 minutes 38 per kilometer, cadence 187 steps per minute, ground contact time 219 milliseconds, vertical oscillation 6.28 centimeters, stride 1 meter 16 centimeters. To do a top trumps and pick the best of each category, power, Sky Paris, pace, Sky Paris, Cadence, Sky Paris. Ground contact time, Alpha Fly 3. Vertical oscillation, Sky Paris. Stride, Sky Paris. To draw some conclusions, I like all of these shoes, I like running in all of them, but the New Balance has a weight penalty. It's the heaviest shoe here. It's very comfortable. The ride is really nice in it. It's, a, it's, it's like a high performing, easy day shoe for me at high, 
high vertical oscillation. The Mizuno needs time to bed in on, a, on a, a short distance like this. It takes me a while to bed in and go with the flow of the shoe. So on a performance test like this, it's, it's, it's not going to perform at its best. What it needs is a long straight run, which I'll be giving plenty of long straight runs in this shoe. What was really interesting is the Paris, the Metaspeed Sky Paris. It's the lightest shoe, which is an incredible achievement. It wasn't a surprise to me that the lighter shoes performed better, but the first thing you do in any study is you kind of look at this and think, right, needs more testing. In terms of the actionable conclusions, first thing, test the Sky Paris in a long run, see how it feels. I did that 29 and a half kilometers or something at the weekend. It went fine, great. Conclusion number two that's actionable, consider this shoe for Boston. I had decided on the Alpha Fly 3, but I don't know, something about this shoe, maybe I'll pick this one, needs more testing. The next thing is to check this against the Edge Paris, because there are two shoes that are so similar in some ways and very different in the placing of their plate. The Edge Paris is arriving soon, so yeah, more testing before anything definitive. And all of that means more data, more decision making. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you'd hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff in the description below and I'll happily answer any questions you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there. It's some great videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.